morning. My name is Susie Bao James, and I'm your mistress of ceremonies for today. Welcome to the official United States Virgin Islands Madras Fabric Unveiling Ceremony. It is finally here. We've been waiting seven years, and we are now going to be able to see the beautiful fabric that represents us, the people here in the Virgin Islands. Thank you for coming. I will not take up any more time. I'd like to welcome Ms. Casida H. Health. She is the director of the Virgin Islands Council of Arts. She will give you the welcome remarks. Good morning, good morning. The theme for today is brief. So I have very brief <laughs> welcome remarks. Good morning to everybody and welcome. I'm so happy to see everyone here today to celebrate with us. It is with great pleasure to be here to unveil another piece of USVI history. Arts and culture is essential to all communities. It nourishes our spirit, reflects our deepest emotions, challenges us to expand our understanding, transcends differences, and reminds us, reminds us that we are one community. I commend all the individuals who had the vision and foresight to take on such an amazing task. I'd like to take this time to thank a few amazing individuals who assisted us with getting this ceremony done today. These individuals never hesitate to answer the call to assist VI Council on the Arts. They may fuss, but they always come with open arms. Pamela Toussaint, Hazel Kelp, Everett Christian, Shamari Haynes, Shalita Shine, Susie Bao James, Thank you. We appreciate you, Advaita. I would also like to thank the commissioner of DPNR, Commissioner Oriel, and Vita's board and staff, Chairman Raul Carrillo, Vice Chair Claire Roker, Glenn Corbina Davis, Karen Thurlin, Vernon Finch, and Vernon Ariza. I'd also like to thank Vita's staff. We are small but mighty. Kendall Henry, Shanaz Alameen, Daria Lynch, and our intern, Kenia Gepp. I would like to officially announce that the following fabric stores have been certified merchants of the U.S. VI fabric. And they are the fabric store in St. Thomas, LNT Milliner, Fabric in Motion, DVDV Fabric, and St. Croix, Ebony, and Cloud. So stay tuned. The material will be in the stores shortly, not next week, but shortly. We do have it on island, and it will be in the stores once we can get it distributed to the different stores. Thank you for coming, and enjoy. Now we're going to have a little history of a, about Madras fabric. Um, it is amazing. I learned a lot about it from my dear friend, Mr. Bradley Christian. I never knew much about it. I love the material, but we're going to have a history now of it by my dear cousin, Vivian Epperson Flood. I just got the towel to take. Good morning, everyone. Hi, from Senators, Administrative Senate, Sue. Carrillo, my good friend, Leah Roker, dear friend Daddy Christian, Miss Patsy, May Louise, Commissioner Oriel. I am truly thankful for this moment and truly honored. I know when Director Welch said about being brief, I don't know how you can speak about the history of Madras. So I'm going to try to do my best and not waste your time. The history of the Madras fabric is truly one that is diverse, unique, as the intricate, woven, dyed, bright colors, strands of the cotton that creates variety of a one-of-a-kind fabric. The dynamic historical story of Madras fabric, also called Madras check, real Madras handkerchief, George cloth, Jimmy cloth, is one of cross-cultural relevance. With an Indian foundation, a British economical influence, an African transcendental slave trade collection 
is Caribbean relevant. And today, those Virgin Islands of United States cultural significance. So let us begin this historical journey from a city 9,242 miles away, 30 hours away, in the Indian Ocean, requiring us to cross the continent of Africa and the Atlantic Ocean to our territory in the Caribbean Sea, these U.S. Virgin Islands. That city is the city of Madras. The Madras fabric gains its name from the city of Madras located in the southeast region of India, now known as Chennai, from where the fabric first made its way to the west. The city of Madras was originally known as Madras Patnam, a fishing village with a history back to the second century. In 1612, the Dutch was the first European traders who established a trading post to trade mainly the local calico cloth, which was in high demand. In 1626, the British English East India Company established themselves aside in a city called Armgan and found that the local cloth was of poor quality and that unsuitable for export. They ventured down the coast and ended up in Madras, Padham. In, 18, in, in August of 1639, a grant was secured from the local ruler to establish a trading post and the modern outpost of Madras was founded and begun. To secure a reliable supply of merchandise, the company attracted Indian merchants and weavers by promising them what we know in the Virgin Islands as EDC benefits, promising them 30 years of exemption from duties which resulted in approximately 400 families of weavers permanently setting in the city of Madras. During the British colonization of India and in the 17th and 18th century, the popularity for the light weight medium cotton in Greece and Madras continued was shipped to all corners of the British colonies, which made the fabric global as we know it today. The Madras fabric has a long history and a unique characteristic. In the 12th century, the original Madras fabric was plain, undyed cotton muslin. Stripes were added to create the first Madras fabric. It was exported to Africa and the Middle East for use as head wraps. By the 1500s, the fabric became more elegant, refined, black printed, or embroidered with elaborate floral patterns and religious designs using natural vegetable dyes. Being originally made from the bark of the tip skin of an ancient tree called the Cavalon Pata. The weave was simple and loose with predominant colors of shades of blue, black, and red checks. A soft, lightweight, readable cotton fabric suited to the humid tropical climate with a colorful pattern textured and a distinctive plaid design. The typical pattern as we know it is large scale plaid in bright bold reds and greens with yellow and blue undertones, now known as a tartan plaid, which had its Scottish influence, which is the characteristic pattern persons are referring to when they call the term madras. The bright and bold colors are thought to be reflective of the hot climate and the foliage of the place where the fabric was made. In the 1800s, the Scottish applied, occupied India and were well to their tartan plaid. The Madras reproduced, and the, the Madrasis, as they were called, reproduced the plaid in their material. The distinctive feature is that the hand woven, and I have to say it is hand woven or mechanically woven for modern day, has the same pattern on both sides, which is one of the easiest way to determine authenticity of the fabric. The fabric has small flaws called slubs, which are thick spots in the yarn because it's woven, which gives the fabric its unique texture and also a sign of authenticity. The Madras fabric is woven and not printed. The modern day colorful Madras fabric as we know it, has a plaid, checked, or striped pattern in bright bow colors that comes in three varieties. The basic type 
made by dyeing cotton thread in different colors that are then woven to make various patterns and plaid patterns. The patchwork, which is now I know that a couple of the cultural groups are dealing with their patchwork madras, are made with pieces of cotton madras, fabric of different patterns stitched together. And of course, there's bleeding madras. Interesting history, for it was an economic basis of a madras that faded, that was found lucrative to then say, you know what? It's the madras that is guaranteed to bleed. The madras is a bleeding madras, uses dyes of natural vegetable dyes, and when washed, the color changes and subtly changes in each washing of the fabric. The tartan plaid pattern is the result of the tartan craze, which started with the visit of King George VI to Scotland in 1822, which influenced the British in, in India, and the tartan plaid started to become incorporated into Madras. The fabric was initially woven on 60 by 40 hand looms with variations in stripe or solid squares with different names. What we may historically know here growing up is what has been likened to when our grandparents and great grandparents called it the Madras headscarf. The real Madras headscarf was coined by British, by British merchants to describe the eight meter long, 36 inch wide fabric that came on a bolt that was cut into three squares. Madras and its cultural impact. In India, Madras is still woven and it is really not a popular fabric because it's linked to economic status. They started out as the luge, which was like a saran and that saran when it transitioned to Africa then began to become into a headpiece. In the US, the Madras has its history that is what we see as plaids. And that is the biggest thing that there's a confusion in regards to madras and plaids. And so you have individuals and designers like Ralph Lauren. And I know recently um, Louis Vuitton launched a madras handbag that only cost you about $4,500 for the bag. So we haven't gotten one of those yet. Madras first made its appearance in 1718 in the US. It would appear in the New York Times as a sergeant of Madras. And in 1930, the, the Madras gained its popularity among American tourists who, carry, who vacationed in the Caribbean and became a sign of prestige when they wore the Madras and returned that they were affluent. Um, it was believed that Madras made it to the United States based on the Atlantic slave trade. What is key for us is our connection of how Madras made it to the Virgin Islands. And I am so happy today that Mr. Bradley Christian is sitting there with his brainstorm and his idea to see it to have come to fruition of Madras in the US Virgin Islands. <laughs> As part of the transatlantic trade trade, and you say, you know, you look at, you take lemons and you make lemonade. It's, it's slavery is a part of our history, but it is not us. And so in the transatlantic slave trade, the Madras fabric was an expensive commodity. Actually, at one point, as you look in the history, it was more expensive and had more value than human beings. But it became a major trade item. And Madras to the Caribbean, as what we can link, has been linked through the African slave trade, through the French islands, to the US Virgin Islands. We're still researching what's the specific date that it got here. But what I think is interesting about the Madras fabric in the US Virgin Islands and has been in our history is its use and its meaning. Madras has many different meanings across cultures, across relevance. And in the US Virgin Islands, where you had in the British islands, the Madras fabric was meant for individuals that women had to cover their heads. They could not show their hair. It was an issue related to slave trade. But in the US Virgin Islands, when the, when the material arrived and was utilized, it was really more utilized in, in the Virgin Islands as head wraps and aprons. The use of now as full-fledged clothing is something that's new, relatively new, although it's few of us off, many of us know it as being used as that. And so as we look at its relevance to the US Virgin Islands, today, to be a part of an idea of Mr. Christian that came to fruition 
that establishes Virgin Islands identity that says, this is who we are. This is the pride that we share. This is the material that we wear. Is truly, truly an opportunity. And an opportunity for us to be proud, for us to embrace, for us to know the meaning of our fabric. And so for that, I want to say to each of you, thank you for the opportunity. There's still more research to come. There is still more conversations to be had on Madras. And Ms. Welch, I try to be as brief as I could be on the history of Madras. Thank you, Vivi. We are now going to have the reading of the I Act number 8424 by the Honorable Jean Perry. Did I say it correctly? Oriol. All morning, I'm trying to pronounce the commissioner's name, Commissioner of Department of Planning and Natural Resources. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Administrator Sanis, Senator Viale, uh, Virgin Islands Council of the Arts Chair, Raul Carrillo, other board members present. Uh, good morning. Ms. Susie Bell James, Ms. Vivian Epson Flood, Mr. Bradley Christian, and all the other platform guests. Uh, thank you all for your commitment to the arts and culture of the United States Virgin Islands. Good morning to the people of St. Croix present in the audience today and those viewing and listening across the Virgin Islands. Thank you for establishing the history of the Madras pattern. Um, we will now focus on the legislation that brings us here today. From Bill Number 33-0026, the legislature declared in part, um, and I encourage everyone to read the full act, but in part, the movement to develop an official Madras pattern for the U.S. Virgin Islands began with informal conversations between tradition and culture bearers from the territory to include Delta Dorsch, Dorothy Elsko, Yuleli Rivera, Bradley Christian, Ruth Molinar, Jean Emanuel, Lois Haptis, and Senator Myron Jackson, and all those who participated in the Smithsonian Institution Folk Festival of 1990 at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. In 1998, the Madras fabric was selected as the official cloth of the 150th Emancipation Celebration. The St. Croix Heritage Dancers, the oldest quadrille group in the territory, applied for a grant from the Virgin Islands Council on the Arch which was later awarded, and commissioned textile artist Debbie Sun to develop an official Madras pattern for the territory, and out of, several develop, out of several developed, one was chosen by the organization as the best prototype for an official design. The official design of the Virgin Islands Madras constitutes a woven fabric in pattern of green, representing natural resources and production, turquoise, representing the natural beauty of the waters of the territory, royal blue, representing the deep sea and transport and discovery, red, representing strength and love, pink, representing the conch shell and the call to freedom, yellow, representing the official flower of the Virgin Islands, and white, representing the original and traditional dress made of flower sacks. The official pattern for the territory will serve as a branding tool for the unification of the territory, cultural heritage tourism product, and be uplifted as a symbol of pride for hundreds of thousands of Virgin Islanders at home and abroad who will help in authenticating the pattern as the official cultural fabric of the U.S. Virgin Islands. From these declarations, Act Number 8424 was established, amend amending Title I Virgin Islands Code Chapter 7, which is to establish the official Madras of the Virgin Islands of the United States, making a $5,000 appropriation from the Centennial Special Fund to the Virgin Islands Council of the Arts for the manufacturing of the official Madras fabric on behalf of the government of the Virgin Islands. Bill number 33-0226 was passed by the 33rd legislature on December 30th, 2020, an act 8424 was signed into law by the Honorable Albert Bryan Jr. on January 21st, 2021. Closing, I wish to thank 
the VI Council on the Art staff and all of their partners for their hard work in making this event possible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Orio. Now we're gonna have some remarks from the person that is the driving force behind us having our own madras, Bradley Christian, who is the president of the St. Croix Heritage Dancer. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the official unveiling of the <clears throat> Virgin Island Madras Fabric. Good morning to our platform guests, um, our administrator, Senator Cordville, Mr. Raul Carillo, who I've known for many years and have worked with, Meloise William, representing our delegate to Congress. Oh, Mr. Oreo, Vivian. <laughs> Everson Flood, my wife Patricia, and of course our own mistress of ceremony, Susie Bow James. Again, good morning. I'm very happy and honored to be here this morning <clears throat> in celebration of our unveiling of our Madras material. It was back in, in 2015 when Mary Dima, Debbie Sons, and myself started discussing at one of the functions that Mary, D Mary Dima held over at Olympic Park. I was speaking to Mary Dima and telling her that a lot of the Caribbean islands have a Madras fabric that they can say is the national fabric, but we don't have one. And Mary said to me, well, why is that, Brad? And I said, I don't know, Mary. I have been thinking about this for a number of years that this is something needed to be done. And Mary said, well, let me go and get this lady. And she brought Debbie Sons to me and introduced her. And from then we started talking, we set up several meetings. We met at my home, months in, months out, we discussed it. We started putting things together we started coming up with colors and the meaning of the colors that we were choosing had to be represented to Virgin Island culture and history. We came up with several different patterns before we just narrowed it down to the one that we have now. One thing I insisted to Mary and Debbie that whatever we decide on, it cannot be something that we have seen already. We want the Virgin Island Madras to be something different are unique to us, the people of the Virgin Island. So from there, the ball started rolling. It got harder as time went on because at times we thought that we wasn't getting anywhere with it because we had to stop, continue, stop, continue. There was some obstacles in our way. There were some stones in our way, but thank God Almighty, we were able to move them out of our way. <clears throat> I was ill a couple of years ago and had to go off island. So when the legislation came up with the public hearings and Senate session, I was not able to attend. So I call my very, 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 very good friend, Alvin Milligan, spoke to him and asked him, could you please go to the legislature and this public hearing and represent me, you know, because I cannot, I will not be able to come back in time. Alvin did, and he did an outstanding job. Today, Alvin, I stand here proudly to say to you, thank you very much for representing me at those hearings and the session in the legislature as well. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we can't stop here. The Madras is now our official fabric of the Virgin Islands. A lot of students and people have come to me and asked me, do the Virgin Islands have a national dress? 
And I said, no, not really, we don't. So we now have the fabric, and maybe we need to start thinking about creating a costume for the Virgin Islands. So that would be the next project. Maybe it wouldn't be me, but someone else can work on it, but I am thinking about it. So as in closing, I would like to give um, special thank yous to some people. Uh, I would like Mary Dima, please stand. This is a, Mary Dima is a lady that um, helped to get this project underway. And Mary, I know that you stand very proud today as well. And um, again, it's through your effort, through you, your pushing, along with Debbie and myself, that we are where we are today. Debbie Sums, our designer, who designed the fabric. Uh, my niece, Astia Lebron, please stand Astia. Uh, Astia went to legislature and also testified and I was happy for that. She's also the farmer, one of the farmer, Miss Sincroy. Astia, along with my wife Patricia, is one of my biggest supporters. Anything I do, Astia proudly big me up all the time. Thank you, Astia. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> Bernice Cornelius, who is she's not here today. Bernice also testified at the legislature. Thank you to Bernice. Shalana Brown. My good, good, good friend, Vivian Epperson Flood. Vivi, my God, thank God Almighty for you. Vivi called me when things was in the legislation that she didn't think should be in there and things that were being left out. Vivi made note of it and make sure she said, no, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, and I'm going to make sure you're in an island, I'm going to make sure God, I spoke to you and I know what you want, and this is going to be done. Vivian Eberson Flood, thank you. <laughs> Ms. Mohair, she was one of them that also testified at the Hey, hearing, thank you, Ms. Moorhead, for testifying as well. Thank you to the Virgin Island Council and Arts for passing the grant to allow us to use the grant to hire Ms. Debbie Sons for doing the work that she did to the Virgin Council and Arts. Thank you. And thank you to the 33rd legislature for actually passing the legislation making the Virgin Island Madras a reality. Thank God Almighty that I was able to live to see this day because a lot of times we do things and we die and we never live to see it. Thank God I was able to live to see this day come to fruition. God bless and have a nice day. Amen to that. Next we have some remarks by Jose Raul Carrillo. Chairman of the Virgin Islands Council on the Arts. Good morning and welcome. And I know you all in the sun, so I'll be very short. But I want to say on behalf of the Virgin Islands Council on the Arts, it was a pleasure, Bradley, working with you and others um, that led to this day. Thanks to the 33rd legislature. Um, the 34th is represented here, but the 33rd is also here. So thank you. And for all others who have ideas as crazy as it may sound or as trivial as it may sound, come to this center and speak to Kendall Henry, the Virgin Council in the Art, wants more grants application that transform our history and promote us as a people. So um, I'm glad that Bradley is here and he could smell his roses while he's alive, but others could do it. You, no, no person is too young or too old to apply for a VICA grant. So Kendall Henry here um, is the person you would need to see. He will work you through the process. It may sound complicated if you have never done it before, but truly it's not. So, and we're looking for fresh ideas Fresh teams, etc. So thank you and congratulations, Bradley.
Now we'll have some remarks from the Honorable Kurt Vialet, Senator of the 34th Legislature. A little shot here. Good morning, Administrator Sanis, Senator Frankie Johnson, who just joined us, Raul Carrillo, the man of the hour, Bradley Christian, his wife, Patsy, my good friend, Vivi, Jean-Pierre Oriol, I think I'm the first one to say your name right today, <laughs> Mayor Louise, Susie, Kendall, and everybody else who's gathered here today. Um, I'm speaking today on behalf of the Senate President, Donna Fred Gregory, who asked me to be here. Um, but before I read her message, I got to say that this was one of the easiest bills for us to pass. And a uh, number of individuals were sent to testify, and we really needed one person. We even didn't need anybody. We just needed the bill to come, and we know that something of this significant we had to pass, because this represents Virgin Islands pride. And it's important for us to have that national, nationalistic pride in the Virgin Islands. So the bill was tweaked a bit, and today is a great day because we're here to celebrate Dan Veland. It is my honor to be here today to represent the 34th Legislature of the Virgin Islands as we unveil the official Virgin Islands Madras. Madras has been widely worn throughout the Caribbean for well over 100 years. While there are those who have argued that Madras as a colonial product in a community of predominantly African descendants, history can trace back Madras to the 14th century on the continent of Africa. The Madras fabric was a commodity in the transatlantic trade and its use became popular in Africa, the Caribbean, and Europe. The Madras fabric has become intertwined in our history and culture, and, has, and it has become organically a proud representation of the Virgin Islands. Bill number 33.0226, now Act number 8424, authorized the Virgin Islands Council of the Arts Commission for the Manufacturing of the Virgin Islands Madras. Special thanks to the Virgin Islands Council of the Arts on a job well done. Our Virgin Islands Madras will serve as a marketing brand for the territory. The colors green, turquoise, royal blue, red, pink, yellow, and white representing a separate characteristic of the Virgin Islands and our people. As we continue to build on Virgin Islands pride, this official Madras fabric will be an identifier to Virgin Islands near and far. Many colors, like the melting pot of people, one beautiful design, like our beautiful territory, we call home. This fabric, like us, is uniquely Virgin Islands. The Senate President encourage everyone to wear it proudly, boldly, and with Virgin Islands pride. I want to say a special thank you, Mary Diva, his son, Bradley, Vivi, all individuals who are consistently, consistently behind making this a reality. We must continue to exhibit Virgin Islands pride every single day that we have life. Thank you. Now we'll have Ms. May Louise William, who will be representing the Honorable Stacy E. Plaskett, Delegate to the United States Congress. No, 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 I got it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our platform guest, Administrator Sanis, Senator. Um, Senator Kurt Viole, Senator Franklin Johnson, and all other government officials and representatives of the Virgin Islands Council of the Arts and distinguished guests. My name is May Louise Williams, and I'm honored to be here on behalf of the Office of Congresswoman Stacey E. Plaskett to celebrate the unveiling of the Virgin Islands' very official, very own official Madras fabric. Madras has a rich and varied history here in our community, and now we have our own signature design that reflects our history and experience as Virgin Islanders. Turquoise for the Caribbean Sea that embodies our natural beauty. Blue for the deep seas that allow our transport and make the harbors of St. Thomas an attractive port. Pink for the color of the conch shell and a symbol of our call to freedom. Yellow for our native flower, the ginger thomas. 
white for the original culture attires of Virgin Islanders, and finally, red, which represents the love and strength of us as a people and appears on all flags that have flown over our great territory. We extend a special thank you to all the individuals who worked behind the scenes over the many years to make the creation of the U.S. Virgin Islands official Madras fabric a reality. Senator Myron Jackson, his BI Council of the Arts, Mr. Bradley Christian, Ms. Vivian Eberson Flood, Dr. Larry Larson, and Ms. Debbie Sun. This is a momentous occasion, and we at the Office of Congresswoman Plaskett are related that we now have a Madras fabric design that is an official part of the Virgin Islands culture and history. Congratulations to all of us. Thank you. We're getting close to that unveiling. Now we'll have remarks from Administrator Samuel Sanis, who represents the Honorable Albert Bryan Jr., Governor of the Virgin Islands of the United States. Thank you, ma'am. It is indeed a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Governor Albert Bryan and, of course, Lieutenant Governor Trakansa Roach. Uh, it is extremely fitting that we have such an awesome ceremony in such a historic place. The Dorsch Center. I have to say that uh, for the younger generation, this used to be my movie theater. Can any, anybody remember the courtyard players? That's right. That is so true. Yeah, years and years ago. So um, when I look at the audience, and first of all, I want to say members of the uh, platform, awesome job, man of the hour, you're the man, always will be the man. And of course, the audience, thank you again for being here. But when I look at the audience, I, um, I told myself, uh, let me behave a little because I have my English teacher here, Ms. McKay, one of the few classes that I never skipped, with much respect. And of course, my old Boy Scout master, Mr. Sun, who helped me through my progressive years. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, this is a very prestigious occasion. And of course, I stand between what? You move minutes for the ceremony? You know, you, have you guys noticed that it's always the last person to stand right before a ceremony or lunch? So the pressure is on. So I'll make it brief and to the point. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Everyone, everyone involved for making this such a historic presentation. And one last thing, would it be fitting that maybe a certain senator or senators put in a bill to make this the official dress in terms of uh, the legislature? I'm not pointing fingers, but it's just a suggestion. Thank you and God bless. That's a VLA, you're cool. That is cool. Now, what we all are here for, the unveiling of the official Madras fabric of the United States Virgin Islands, a proud moment for us. Yeah, Bradley. Our beautiful Virgin Islands Madras. Y'all can do better than this. Let me hear it. This is like we've been waiting for it forever. Okay, uh, now we're going to have some special presentations. You can stand up right here, darling. I want to keep looking at it. It is beautiful. It is just simply beautiful. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kendall. I know. I was, I was saying, you see? Don't let me bring out a teacher in me now, okay? 
That, this is my former student. That's why I could speak to him this way. Now I'm just saying, Mr. Kendall, this is my, my guy. He works beyond here at the door center. Okay, um, we're going to have a presentation to Bradley by Miss. I have everybody name right. Kendall, come forward. So when I met with Ms. Flood, she said we absolutely, absolutely had to do something and presentation-wise with the original first piece of material, the actual print. So I went into creative mode and we came up with this, but then we didn't want, we wanted to also put the act so that when you looked at it, you could see the whole thing in its entirety. And it reads, um, it reads, Bradley L. Christian, visionary of the United States Virgin Islands, official Madras fabric. And then it has the, the VI code and the act title. So Bradley, thank you. Congratulations. We did it. Well, you did it. Well, we all did it. Somebody did it. <laughs> so this is just a token of our appreciation. You can put it up in your house and look at it every day and be proud that you helped us to make VI history again. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say thank you on behalf of the people of the United States Virgin Island. I accept this presentation with pride and dignity. I forgot to mention thank you to Dr. Larry Larson also for helping to make this a reality. So Larry, Dr. Larson, thank you. Okay, so we've come to the end. I want to thank all of you for being here to witness our history. I love this fabric. Please go out. I want to see everybody dressed in our national fabric. It is so good to know we have a national fabric. I've traveled a lot of the Caribbean islands. I, they have their fabric, and I'm always like, we don't have one, but we always adapt theirs. We have our own. We can say it's our own. Thank you for coming. There are refreshments inside. Everybody be safe. Thank you again.
Yeah. On va à de la part. Thank <laughs> you. 